Welcome to Data Platform Geek Virtual Summit 2021. And thank you guys uh, for joining my session. I am uh, Jean Joseph. I've been in IT for over 18 years. I started as a network administrator, then I moved to database administration and SQL development. After 10 years working as a DBA and SQL, as a senior DBA and SQL developers, I moved to data engineering. So today I will uh, explain to you the fundamentals of NoSQL. And also I will demo um, uh, how can you use uh, um, uh, some script using uh, Azure Cosmos DB with MongoDB API. So uh, for, for today's uh, overview, I will go over the architecture, sharding, replica set, and I will go also over NoSQL assumptions and the CAP COM. Uh, our demo, as I'll I already mentioned it will be on uh, Azure Cosmos DB with MongoDB API. And I will uh, let you know the strengths and weaknesses of NoSQL versus uh, SQL and the key takeaway. What is NoSQL, guys? NoSQL is a non relational database is a non-relational and distributed database. It does not require a fixed schema. It allows you to avoid joins and easy to scale. It's optimized for compute and data retrieval. So that means you have to come up with a good access pattern. It's used for solving data availability problems. It is more suitable for the hierarchical data store. It is based on clients. We're going to go over that later. So when we're looking at SQL and versus NoSQL, our DBMS system, we have transactional and analytical, which is still transactions. And then NoSQL is interaction. This is what makes NoSQL very powerful if consistency does not matter. So why should you use NoSQL database? NoSQL database are a great fit for many modern applications, such as mobile, web, and gaming that require flexible, scalable, high performance, and highly functional database to provide great user experience. So we mentioned flexible. So what we mean by flexibility? So that's mean NoSQL databases provide flexible schema that enable faster and more interactive development. The flexible data model makes NoSQL database ideal for semi-structured and unstructured data. We also mentioned scalability. So what we mean by scalability is that NoSQL database designed to scale out by using distributed cluster of hardware instead of scaling up by adding expensive robust servers. Some cloud provider handle this operation behind the scene as a fully managed services. We also mentioned high performance. So what we made by high performance. So that's mean uh, it's optimized for specific data model and access pattern that enable higher performance then trying to accomplish uh, similar functionality using relational databases. It's also highly functional. So that's mean uh, um, uh, 
NoSQL database provider, um, API and data types that are purpose built for each of the respective data model. So what are the categories of NoSQL database? There are four common ones. You guys probably heard of them. The first one is uh, document database. It pairs each key with a complex data structure known as document. It contains many different key value pairs or key array pairs or even nested document. For example, we have MongoDB, CouchDB, Azure Cosmos DB with MongoDB API. We also have key value store. They are the simplest NoSQL databases. Every single item in the database is stored as an attribute, name, or key together with its value. For example, if you see main cache, Redis, Coins, and um, these are the kind of uh, key value pair database, even Azure um, uh, Cosmos DB with SQL API or DynamoDB. If we, uh, the third one is a graph store. Graph store, they are used to store information about networks, such as social connections. Graph store include Neo, 4G, and Hyper Graph DB. If we think of uh, LinkedIn, they are using Graph in the back end. And then the last one is wide colon store. Wide colon store such as Cassandra and HBase are optimized for queries over a large data set and store colon as data together instead of words. So when it comes to compliance, this is where people have a lot of confusions and I'm about to explain it to you. So this way you don't have to worry. We, we all knew that uh, SQL is ACID, based compliance, co correct? So what we meant by ACID, so that's been, um, uh, we see all kind of database rules, correct? Like all or nothing, unique constraint, foreign key is implies delete for example when you delete one row will delete related rows so what does a stand for um for example a stand for at atomicity so that means everything in a transaction succeed or the entire transaction is rolled back c is consistency so that's when a transaction cannot leave the database in an inconsistent state. I is isolations. So that's when transaction cannot interfere with each other. D is for durability. So that's when when a transaction is complete, the data must persist. So even if you shut down the server, you restart it, that data should be available. What about NoSQL compliance? It is base compliance. So basic availability is that the system does guarantee availability in terms of cap theory. We have soft state. So soft state indicate that the state of the system may change over time, even without uh, input. This is because of the eventual consistent model. Eventual consistent uh, uh, is that uh, the system will become consistent over time, given that the system doesn't receive input during that time. So when should you use uh, um, uh, no, uh, a base compliance? 
Base compliance solutions are better for fuzzy subjects like sentimental analysis. For example, a base structure project could scan a Twitter feed um, uh, to look for words that imply emotion based on a specific hashtag. So that's mean uh, um, uh, you can see consistency does not matter. We don't care about consistency. So um, uh, we can talk me about uh, NoSQL without understanding the CAP COM. C stands for consistent. So consistency is that all replica contain the same version of data. Clients always have the same view of the data, no matter what nodes. Then we have availability. So that means the system remains operational on failing node. All clients can always read and write. And then the P is for partition tolerance. Is that multiple entry system remain operational on system split, like communication malfunctions. System works well across physical network partition. So if we look in our caps, we have uh, uh, consistency, availability, and we have uh, um, partitions, tolerance. Unfortunately, we can only select two out of three. If we care about consistency and availability, this is kind of uh, a DBMS system, and then you have to think there might be a bit of uh, performance impact. If you need uh, consistency and partition tolerance, you have to think of MongoDB, Redis, and HBase. If, for example, you think you will need availability and partition tolerance, so this is where you're going to think of uh, Azure Cosmos DB with SQL API and uh, DynamoDB, CouchDB. The rule of thumb for CAPTOM is that it's impossible for you to satisfy all of three. So now let's think about the data model type. And then this is another place where people get confused. So for relational, we have to think of entity. So you see relationship rely on normalization. For non-relational key value model, you have to think of attribute. Key attribute, which is rely on access pattern, very important. For non-relational graph model, you have to think of nodes, age, and this is rely on relationship. For data, uh, when, if we want to compare the data model, SQL versus NoSQL, Let's take a look at the characteristic. For example, for representations, we see multiple tables, views, row, and columns. For, uh, non for NoSQL, we see collections of documents. We see single table with key value pairs, correct? And then whereas for primary and formal, we see entity. For SQL and NoSQL, we see access pattern. For data design, we see normalization for, no, for SQL or dimensional data warehouse, whereas uh, for NoSQL, we see denormalization document, wide colon, or key value. When it comes to optimizations, for SQL, it is for storage. For NoSQL, it is optimized for compute. For query style, which is uh, the, uh, um, the language, we have only one. This is where SQL is so powerful. It doesn't matter what um, database uh, vendor you are using. You still have to, we have only one language, which is SQL. There might be some differences, but uh, 
it's still SQL. Whereas for NoSQL guys, there are multiple languages depending on the database services. For scaling, SQL is vertical and NoSQL is horizontal. So um, I want to uh, show you some concepts while working with other people, they kind of confuse. And then uh, SQL is fixed schema. So that's when you have to redefine your schema. No SQL is dynamic schema. So both of them start with uh, database. We see table view in our case as uh, we're going to use Azure Cosmos DB with MongoDB API, we will see collection. Sorry, we see collections. For raw, SQL, it's raw. For NoSQL, with uh, MongoDB API, when you're using Azure Cosmos DB, it is document. Colon is field. Index, still index. Join is embedded document. So when you heard NoSQL people talking about embedded documents, so that's when it is joined. Foreign key is reference. And then partition is shard. So these are the main concepts. OK, um, uh, MongoDB support two types of replication. One is at the server level. The second is at uh, the database level or even collection level. So uh, replica set is at the server level. So that means it is a uh, redundancy and failover, zero downtime for upgrade and maintenance. It support uh, master slave replication with strong consistency and delay consistency. So, and then it is geo spatial feature. So um, for shading um, of data, it is uh, a distributed, uh, it distributes a single database, right? System equals a cluster of machine. You can use range-based partitions to distribute document based on a specific shard key. And then the good thing is it's automatically balanced uh, the data associated with each shot. And then uh, you do have option of also to turn on and off per collections. So uh, when it comes to structure is that we all familiar with SQL, whereas no SQL, this is what you're gonna get. That's the structure for your collections. Okay, NoSQL support CRUD operations, just uh, for your information. Um, the C is for create, so this is DB, that collection, so that's in your collection name, that insert, and then you have uh, DB, that collection, that save. You also have DB, that collection, that update. Once you mention the offset is equal to two, it will uh, insert any record that, that does not exist. So that's mean um, uh, this is just like offset in SQL. Um, uh, the R stand for read. As you can see, this is DB collection that fine. So that's mean this is like a select all from your table and then there is no conditions, right? However, if you want to select uh, one record from your collections, you have to think of uh, DB, that collection, that fine one. There's update. Update is that uh, we have uh, DB, that collection, that update. And then we also have DB, that collection, that uh, update main, many. Update many is like a batch of operations. Update is like a single document. There's delete. There's uh, delete that uh, collection, that delete. And then there's uh, delete that collection, um, um, that delete mainly. It's like in a, it's like batch operation. There is remove as well, but I think uh, um, they may not support this one, but 
some version they support it, do support it. So that's mean you, know, you can still use it on old version. Okay, NoSQL CRUD example. If you need to insert uh, um, some document into your table, there is a DB that user. The user is the collection name and insert. That's how it will insert. If you want to delete, you can put your expression here as well and delete it. If you want to find you, and there's conditions you can put to find it, right? If you want to update, as you can see, I can update it to 45 and increase the salary, correct? So now, as we will use Azure Cosmos DB to uh, do our demo, I wanna go, you know, over what uh, a basic introduction. So Azure Cosmos DB is a turnkey NoSQL global distributed database. So that means it is highly responsive. And then it's designed as a global distributed database system. Azure Cosmos DB allow you to write and read from the local replica of your Azure Cosmos DB database, which is uh, replicated across uh, any number of uh, Azure regions. It is well-defined consistency choices. Um, uh, it, uh, Azure Cosmos DB is the only that NoSQL database that support five different consistency. For example, you no longer have to make the extreme trade-off between consistency, availability, latency, and programmability. Azure Cosmos DB, multiple master replica, provide is carefully defined to offer five well-defined consistency choices like strong, bounded, starless. I will go over that later sessions, right? And then it can, uh, it provide low latency and high availability for your global distributed application. It is limitless uh, elastic scalability. So that's mean, uh, um, Sorry about that. That means, for example, oops, my mouse is acting up. So that means, uh, for example, uh, Azure Cosmos DB scale read and write globally and pay only for the throughput and storage that you use. It is guaranteed low latency. So what we, we mean by um, uh, Azure Cosmos DB um, uh, is highly responsive. It is a uh, planet scale application. And then Azure Cosmos DB guarantee less than 10 milliseconds for both read, even index and write at uh, the 99% all around the, globe, uh, the world. And then uh, it's a provider multi model with a native NoSQL support, like uh, um, we went over that, like uh, MangoDB, uh, um, like uh, Colon, Family, Graph, Key Value Pair, and Documents. And then the good thing of Azure Cosmos DB is that it automatically indexes. Uh, all your data at the time of ingestion. It is an enterprise grade performance scale. So um, what I mean by Azure Cosmos DB give you enterprise grade security and compliance. And it is the first and only service that offer and these three leading comprehensive SLA for na five nine with high availability, low latency at the 99th percentile, and it's guaranteed throughput and consistency. It allows you to scale both uh, global distributions and computational resources. So now um, for Azure Cosmos DB consistency, as I mentioned, it's, both, uh, it's the only NoSQL database that have five 
So there's strong, as you can see, there's eventual. There's bounded, standless, session is the default, consistent uh, prefix. But here's the thing, guys. This is where Capture or um, even buy uh, comes in place. For example, if you care about consistency, as you can see, stronger consistency, higher latency, and lower availability. So that's where you see kind of performance impact. Because uh, if you issue any update, so what happens if your consistency is set to strong, all replica have to be in sync in order for all users to see that modification. So that means there might be latency and or performance impact. For bound standardness, it is kind of this, um, the same if you set it up to 100, but there's some ways you can play. Sessions is the default. For example, if you care about performance, you don't care about um, uh, consistency, you have to think of eventual. Eventual is that you have weaker consistency, lower latency, and higher availability. So the choice is all yours. Depend of what exactly you want to achieve. If your application um, consistency matter, you think of strong or bounded standards. And then uh, if, for example, um, uh, you don't care, so you can leave it to default, which is sessions. But if you really don't care, I would highly suggest you to leave it to eventual because of the performance you can benefit from it. And then Azure Cosmos DB support multi uh, uh, API. So for example, there is a Corsico, there is MangoDB, there is Cassandra, there is a Grimland API, and then there is Table API. In our case, we're going to use MangoDB API. So now um, uh, some confusions, and I want, want you guys to be aware when you're using Azure Cosmos DB, there are some entities you need to understand. For SQL, it is item. For Cassandra, it is role. For MangoDB, it is document. For Grimland, it is node or age. For table, it is item. So now, in order for you to uh, use Azure Cosmos DB, you will need to create your account. Once you create your account, that's the time you will be able to create your database collection and insert your document. So let's go to the demo. I'm about to switch to a different screen. Um, give me one second. I'm switching to a different screen. So this way I can start with my demo. Okay. So I'm using uh, um, Studio 3D for MangoDB. Um, let me check the version of uh, Azure Cosmos DB. My connection is on uh, Azure Cosmos DB, right? As you, let me show you my connection. Give me one second. Okay, perfect. So this is my connection. As you can see, I'm using uh, Azure Cosmos DB. I'm setting up the connection here. And then uh, for SLL, you have to accept this. If you do not select uh, accept uh, any server SSL certification, your connection may fail. So now let's go to some demo. If you're looking at here, I have absolutely um, uh, no user database. I only have the admin one. Um, to create a database uh, in Azure Cosmos DB with MangoDB API, you have to use use database. Sorry, guys. I think I opened the wrong one, but that's fine. Let me quickly change this. The DPG. Let me quickly change this. Let me, yep, perfect. So if I say use um, uh, data platform gig and I 
So that's been, uh, as you can see, it's switched uh, to the database, correct? So if I refresh here, you will see I cannot see it. You can only see any database you created when you, for example, create a collection. Even though if I say show database, there will be, for example, no data return for this one. Correct. However, if I create uh, a collection and call that collection demo, collection is table in SQL, if you will. So that's when you can see, OK. And then uh, if I, for example, refresh here, you will see that uh, data platform gig DB demo created. Um, uh, if I want to see the collection using demo, I can see all my collections. I can see I have demo. And I can use, uh, for example, get collection as well. And if I need details about that collection, I can use DB get collection and then uh, use the start. As you can see, I can uh, let me change this uh, to JSON. You can see, for example, I can uh, uh, see how many records. We have no document size. I can get the terms of information, index size, and everything. If you want to insert uh, uh, one record, you have to use insert one, as I already mentioned, right? So um, let's insert one record. So we use uh, DB that uh, um, uh, demo, which is the collection, insert one. So now we insert one record. As you can see, the acknowledge is true. However, if, for example, you're using it this way, guys, you can, for troubleshooting, it might be very hard for you. I always like to pull it into a variable. So all I'm doing here is declaring a variable and then inserting my document, then use that variable inside my uh, uh, insert one. The reason why you have to do it this way, this will very be helpful when it comes to troubleshooting. So as you can see, we have a node that knowledge happen to be true. We can, let's say if we want to insert mainly, we, uh, like do a batch operation, we can do the same thing. I'm inserting. Um, the difference is that for each document, I have to use comma. Okay. If we want, for example, as I said, it's always best practice uh, to use uh, um, uh, variable. As you can see, when I was inserting one record, I just declared uh, my variable, which is cons document. Whereas if I have to insert uh, uh, if, if I'm about to use uh, insert many, I have to think of array. As you can see, it is uh, different when you see these two variables, right? So that's mean uh, I'm using uh, cons and then uh, declare a document array, name it, name my variable, and then uh, um, insert uh, my uh, document. And into that variable and then use uh, insert main to insert it. So we have again everything go well. So if we want to um, see all the record that we inserted, if we want to see all the record that we inserted, we have to use uh, on DB uh, the collection name and find. We think that fine, there's two criteria, and I will explain it to you. So we have uh, where close, where you can filter, and we have the projection, where, for example, you put the field name that you want. So let's go and uh, um, read uh, uh, some data, which is select all from table. If we have to use SQL, let's change the view. As you can see, this is the record that we have. So if we want to filter records, right? So we have to think of uh, um, using workloads within uh, your script. 
So um, if I want to reach uh, the whole field, there's no need for me to mention projection because uh, by default, uh, it will be everything. So if I want to select a post ID that equal to 3621, this is uh, 3621. All I have to do is use that script, which is db that demo that find, and then the first one is my criteria, and all I have to do is uh, mention the field and then use color and pass that ID. True enough, I have this one. If I have, for example, to, but it's always best practices uh, doing troubleshooting, guys, to um, uh, explicitly mention the data type because sometimes while uh, when you're doing some batch operations, it fell because you didn't mention the data type. It's hard for you to get some insight. But if you uh, explicitly mention the data type, when it's fell, you're gonna get a an error message that is more meaningful. So I always like to mention, uh, for example, the data type, as you can see. So in my case, it is number eight. So we get the same result set. One thing I want you to understand, if you need, uh, you know, there are multiple data type, uh, right? However, if you're querying object data type, you have to think of that notations. If you do not use that notations, it will fail. For example, you cannot use that notation for array data type. As you can see, this is this will fail, right? But uh, uh, let's say if I want to select one, find one record, where, for example, let me um, put this to three. So this way, you can let me put this to JSON instead. One second. If you're looking at here, guys, you will see, for example, there is author. This is object data type where your information is embedded, right? And then uh, if you're looking at tag, is array. So you don't need that notation. In order for me to, uh, to get uh, where um, uh, nickname is equal to um, Garia, in our case, it's not Garia here. So what we need to do, we have to use that notation, which is uh, um, demo, find one, author, which is your object data type, and then they uh, put that, and then you put the notation. So now if I select this, it will be, uh, it will return the data that I want, which is Garia. If I wanna select uh, all uh, five one, where tag is uh, empty, I can select this one. As you can see, there is none. So that means this is the array data type. You don't need to care about that notation. But if I want to find one record where tag is equal to Python, if I execute this guy, you will see, for example, um, give me one second. You will see that tag is equal to Python, as you can see. So now, um, if you're looking at um, um, uh, when for projections, which is failed, um, if I want to return the whole record, let me put this one here, all right? If I only want to return the field name, which is uh, uh, from author name, from author nickname, so what I have to do, I, all I have to do is to mention um, this, put that, and say one. One mean I want this uh, field to be displayed or returned. So for nickname, it is the same here, as you can see. However, if you do not want a field to be returned, so you have to put zero. You, this is the field name ID, which is zero. So that's when we won't get uh, that ID, object ID. We want to get that field. So if I uh, select this and execute it, I have, uh, for example, um, author name. Let me put this here for you to see it much better. Um, uh, three. Oh. If you're looking at here, you will see, for example, I have author and I have name, which is uh, Jane Joseph, and I have nickname, which is Bobby. 
So for example, you can see that you can do complex operation or equal, less than, and not equal, greater than, and then uh, you can use uh, in, mean, and you can even use regular expression. For example, let me give you, if I wanna know, for example, uh, find all comments uh, that does not have any uh, comments, okay? Get me um, any record that does not have comments. So if I select this one, you will see, for example, um, uh, where, where, for example, there is comment. Sorry about that. This is greater. As you can see, all of them have comments. Uh, if I put this to JSON and I say comment, you will see comments. Okay, let's go a little bit advanced. If I want to find, for example, where comments is greater than 60 and less than, uh, is greater than uh, zero, sorry about that, and less than 60. As you can see, if I put this uh, to table, you will see I have uh, um, 100, right? So that's mean uh, uh, this record will not display. If I go and select this one and execute it, you will see we did not get uh, where comments is greater than 100. So that's when this is how you can do some of the operations. And then uh, you can use all operations, as you can see. So if I get my cell, uh, this is uh, a second way you can uh, read data from the table. Instead of that collection, you can say DB get collection, collection name, and fine. If I wanna, want to return only where share is equal to true and tag is equal to Python, and you can, select, if we select it and we execute it, you will see that, uh, and you, um, uh, if I put this to JSON and read the data, you will see that, for example, um, uh, share is uh, true, share is true, and then because uh, this is all, we use all, even though there is no pattern, but one of our conditions happened to be true, but here you will see share is false, and then this one is Python. So you need either one of them, either um, you need either if it's uh, Python or share is equal to true, you will see that we get the expected result set. So we can use, uh, for example, in operations, as you can see here, if I select the script is that um, it will uh, give me only data where, for example, post ID is in 3511, as you can see, and 4582. Uh, and this is uh, how easy it is. So it's easy to, uh, for example, to put your hands on it. So if you want to select uh, top three from your collections, this is the same query we are familiar with. Because we don't care, about, there's no conditions. We don't want to filter on nothing, and we want to return all uh, the fields. We leave this empty. However, we can limit it to three. So if I select this and execute that uh, that piece of script, you will see, for example, we only return um, three records. Let's say if you're doing some batch operation and then you want to skip uh, the first two. Uh, records, let's say if they are header, you can use, uh, if you're looking at it is the same uh, script that I'm using, the difference is that I'm using that skip at the end to skip the last uh, three, uh, the last, uh, the first two records, as you can see here. So I skip it. Um, but one thing I want you to understand, if you are coming from MangoDB, you want to go to Azure Cosmos DB, uh, um, using MangoDB API, they do not support all kind of operations. So if you want to sort data, so I just leave this just to show you guys. When it comes to sorting, this will fail for Azure Cosmos DB. If I switch to a different environment, it will work. So that's mean sometimes if you come in from, uh, if you have in, uh, if you knew NoSQL, but you have to because uh, of um, the feature as a Cosmos DB with MangoDB API offer, you want to migrate there. So you have to know your application and, and know, for example, all kind of comment that, that you are using 
and then go to uh, Microsoft website for Azure Cosmos DB with MongoDB API and find out if they support it. So you can do complex operation, you, you, you can escape and then sort, but um, this uh, will fail, but this will work. For example, if we um, uh, do do I mention sort? Okay, sort probably here. Okay, perfect. So now, um, if we're looking at here, we can, you know, do kind of complex operation. We can use set operation. We can use uh, um, uh, rename operation, on set operation, current date, um, uh, INC. We can use add to set. There's a there's a tons of operation we can do, but I'm not sure, for example, if we're gonna have time to do all of this. If you wanna update, uh, for example, one record, this is how you can update it. Let's say, for example, if I get that selection, let me get that selection, you will see it is uh, for, for share, it is false, as we can see. So now we want it to be true. If we have to update it, so we say db that get collection name that update one, you have that post, which is the your criteria where post is the go to 56, 13. And then um, you and this is n, and you want, for example, to set share is equal to two. If I set share is equal to two, so you can see we have a uh, positive result set. And if we select the same record again, you will see it is true. This is how you can update. And then this is how you can update in batch. For example, um, if we're looking at here, let's select where tag is, uh, for example, empty. So if you're looking at here, and then uh, if you're looking at tag, it is zero elements. So if we want to put uh, one, we can use on, on set to do that. For example, this is the same uh, um, script that we've been using. The difference is uh, because we are updating more than one record, I have to use update menu. And then we have uh, tags, where tags uh, is uh, empty. And then uh, we will uh, use uh, on set to change it to one. And then uh, if we execute this guy, you will see it is true. And then if we select this one, we execute it. And then uh, if we execute it, you see there's absolutely no record return because we modify it. So if you want, for example, um, to do more complex operation, we can do that. Yeah. Um, uh, if you want to insert one record, this is the way you can do it. And then uh, if you want to delete as well, let's say if I want to delete po uh, post ID, so all I have to do use uh, delete one. If this is in a batch, I will use a delete menu. So for example, if I select delete one and execute this guy, you will see that uh, I was able to delete it. Uh, same thing, for example, I can, for example, delete uh, everything where, for example, um, uh, exit is equal to, uh, exist is equal to false. For example, if you're looking at here, um, uh, oh, we already deleted. Oh, so perfect. So that's me. If you want to delete um, uh, everything, uh, um, more than one record, you have to use delete. Um, um, me menu. So that's mean you can do some aggregate functions, guys. But I'm not sure. For example, if you, if you, sorry for the background noise, you can use uh, um, um, aggregate functions. But for example, um, uh, if you're looking at this is uh, I say DB that get collection. This is the demo. This is the aggregate. I can group by author name. If I go by author name, you will see that I will be able to get uh, that information. And then uh, um, uh, if, uh, for example, you want uh, to find out more information, the index, if there is index. So this is how you can do it. 
Yep. So as you can see, if you want, for example, to get more information, you want to create index, that's how you can do it as well. This is the script you have to use to do it. OK, and then uh, there's MongoDB export uh, if you want to export uh, data. There's MongoDB import if you want to import data. There's MongoDB dump if you want to back up data. There's MongoDB restore if you want to restore data. And then there is exec dump if you want to convert your backup files. So um, uh, this is what I have for demo for today. Let me go back to my PowerPoint and then give me one second. Let me see if I can switch um, to a different screen. Again, one more time. Sorry for the background noise. OK, let me. Oops, that's the wrong one. So give me one second. Um, yep, I hope you guys uh, see my other screen. Yep, um, understanding application feature for NoSQL databases is the thing that you need to understand. You need to know that. You need to understand your feature, you know, your application we use. One thing I want you to understand uh, when it comes to NoSQL, there are two common approaches exist. We have CAPTOM um, that give you consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. However, a guy from AWS Realize that uh, we are facing some kind of uh, gap within uh, CAP. He came up with a new uh, uh, TOM called PI, which still gave you three options, and you still have to select two out of three. For example, as you can see, there's pattern, which is uh, query flexibility, and we have uh, infinite scale and efficiency. So true enough, if we go and understand or build uh, our NoSQL environment using uh, PyTOM, you will see, and you and if you had experience with CAP, you will see Py may resolve some of the issue, but you still have, you will still face consistency issue, and then you will still have, uh, you know, there are some gap that you need to understand. So that's why. Um, before you even choose NoSQL, you have to understand your application feature. And then uh, there is, uh, this is the difference when it comes to feature. For example, I got this from a website. I'm not sure how recent is this, but uh, I realize this is very useful also to share with you. Um, for performance, NoSQL is uh, number one. Really, relational database is kind of low. For reliability, NoSQL is poor, whereas SQL is very powerful, it's good. For availability, they are both good. For consistency, NoSQL is very poor. For data storage, uh, NoSQL is optimized for huge data, like big data, very, very big and huge data, whereas SQL is medium size to large. For scalability, NoSQL is high, and SQL could be high, but it, it will be very expensive. So that means if consistency is what matters for you, you should not think of on NoSQL. If performance is what matters and availability, you don't care about uh, consistency. So you have uh, to think uh, of NoSQL. When, when consistency matter, you think of SQL. When consistency does not matter, it would be best to think of no SQL. So the key takeaways is that you have to understand you choose speed over consistency. You have to understand you choose speed over persistence. And you also have to understand you, for example, um, uh, choose freeform querying of a relationship navigation. And then you need to understand also, you choose native document storage 
of uh, data normalizations. And then also where things can get a little bit messy and which is a plus for NoSQL as well is that it provides you flexible schema of a strict schema. So that's mean flexible schema is amazing. At the same time, if you if you don't have if if you do not plan well, you may end up to create redundant uh, um, field or even one database. Because if you only spell your database, you say use it will create it first and switch. So your data may be under a different database or context. Things that you need to know. Um, thank you so much, guys. And uh, don't forget to, uh, give, to give your feedback. You understand? And then uh, there are three ways for you to win prices. Post your selfie with a hashtag, uh, hash, DPS 2021 give session and conference feedback. Visit our sponsor and exhibitor and also follow us on Twitter at uh, the Data Geek and Data AI Summit. Thank you so much for your participation. One more time, I am Jean Joseph. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to answer it. If I'm, I'm not able to provide you the right answer now, I will blog about it. One more time, thanks.